on this episode. This is just an awesome experience. Ooh, she's licking that right paw. I find it hard to put into words what she means to me. But... I discovered that that one's digging right in. Yeah. My heart is I can tell you're beating. The right it's beating, yeah. yeah. Waking up. Anybody who doesn't need to be in here probably shouldn't be in here. But first... He is an exceptionally dangerous pet. Oh. You'd have thought by now he'd have realised you're not going to kill him. It's all about fear. My heart's pounding. I'm shaking a little bit. He's fearful of me and I'm definitely fearful of him. I think we're going to need some more drugs. Oh, Scott, have you seen who we've got in today? Your uh, favourite. Yeah, great, my old mate, Bam Bam. Bam Bam's in the building. I always think it's lovely when I see that bright red with must be muzzles on the patient card. That always fills me with, uh, with happiness. Yes, gauntlets at the ready, but fingers in your pocket. Yeah. Every six months or so, the word bam bam will flash up on my screen. And yes, it's always a day that you know that the adrenaline is going to be flying high. What are we going to do with you, eh? You who doesn't like to get groomed. Bam Bam needs a haircut badly. He's by nature a very gentle, loving dog. He is just nervous, and so he goes into panic mode. He thinks you're trying to kill him when all you're trying to do is give him a haircut. <coughs> the trouble is that I, as his owner, because I love him to bits, I feel his strain, I feel his stress. Come on, Papa. Good boy. He's been through about six groomers, and none of them will touch him. You feel really defensive because you know he's a wonderful dog and you know his gentle side, you know how loving he is. Come on, Bob, come on, come on. All they see is this gremlin that comes in the door. It's really embarrassing. Oh, morning. Goodness. Good morning. Morning. He's, How's trouble? He's Hi, wound, Bam Bam. Him, wound himself up quite badly. Oh, has he? Already. Yeah, he's shaking like a leaf. Can you okay. see him? Okay, oh dear. Yes. You'd have thought by now he'd have realised you're not going to kill him. Sometimes when I take him and he is very long and hairy, and it's not because I'm negligent, but I can only have him anaesthetised a couple of times a year. People say to me, surely you can take him to the groomers and just give him a sedation. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Because even under sedation, he's still growling, right? And he's trying to fight for his life. So whatever anybody did to this dog, historically, they did a real number on him. <laughs> I love you. It's OK, sweetheart. You know I love you. Mum's a bit upset today. <laughs> She doesn't like to bring you in, you know that. <laughs> the reason why Scott's been so amazing is he's A, never thrown me out with Bam Bam, and what Scott never did is he never judged me. Bye, PB. Bye, hon. Bam Bam, come on then, buddy. Let's go. Good boy. It's shaking, look at him. Poor little thing. He doesn't realise that I have to do it, because no. he's a dog he doesn't understand. <laughs> Please give me a dog back at the end of the day, because he means so much to me. I'll look after him well, and we'll um, give you a call once he's working up. OK, thanks a lot. OK, see you later. OK. Bam, bam. Ah, no. Come this way. Sit down. Be a nice boy. Come on. No. Come on, sit down. Ah. No. If he came in growling, everyone would know where they stood. No. <laughs> Don't be nasty. Come on. But because he comes in very calmly and then launches within seconds, he is an exceptionally dangerous pet. Oh, no. Don't be horrible. No. Stop that. I think we're going to need some more drugs today. Mm -hmm. oh, so... Right, so we'll do our usual technique. OK, I'll slide this through the door. OK. OK, yep. you've got him. I've got him. It's all about fear. He's fearful of me and I'm definitely fearful of him. OK. OK. See what happens. Oh, Oof! Yowza. It's, a, <laughs> it's always a day that you need a stiff drink when Bam Bam really comes is. in. <laughs> a bit dozy. Yeah, those drugs kicking in. The difficulty is then, even with sedation on board, he's still like this. And uh, so we still need to try and get a muzzle on him. Yeah. I must be honest, he's a little fluffy dog, and I'm not a small person. I should be braver. Uh, with broad shoulders and just get on with it. We've neutralised the beast. Jaws are secure. But <laughs> he makes you scared. Okay. Good boy. 
Just always be careful. You remember, this guy actually growls in his sleep. Even with the muzzle on, your adrenaline is pumping high. And to keep a very close eye on the depth of this anaesthetic for our safety as well as his. My heart's pounding. I'm shaking a little bit. I've still got to do my job as well as trying not to get eaten. So nerves on on tender hooks. So do you want to do the fur and the feet? Yep. And I'll do the body bits. All on you. Surprisingly enough, considering how much he shows me his teeth, I can't actually do anything with them when he's awake. Uh, so one of the things I always do for Sheena is actually give him a little bit of a teeth clean, so we'll be doing that today. Have you done the hairdressing before, Ryan? No, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never claimed to be a groomer. A shearer, however. Centre's all finished down this end. Scott, he's just got a bit of a, a, bit of a situation on his tail here. Oh, yuck. Gee, very ulcerated, very sore, isn't it? Mm, looks like he's actually giving that a bit of a chew. Whatever it is, it doesn't look very nice, so I do think we need to chat to Sheen about that and then maybe actually take advantage of him being under anaesthetic and take it off. Yes, I don't know rather not go through this situation again in a few days' time. Mm. To find something that looks that angry and that nasty is a massive cause for concern. Hello, Scott. Hi there, Sheena. How are you doing? I'm OK. OK, so look, that tail lump... It came up very, very quickly. Yeah, that, that um, I don't want to worry you, but that tends to not be a very good sign. When things grow rapidly uh, in a short space of time, then uh, I always say it's best that we remove it straight away. What do you mean? Actually take the end of his tail off. Oh my goodness, is it going to be in a lot of pain? I don't have any concerns regarding pain. Okay. Okay, all right, trust me, and I'll uh, give you a call as soon as you've woken up. Okay. All right then, see you later. Thank you. Bye. Sometimes being a vet is about offering up decisions which are difficult. And to say, I'm going to take a section of your dog's tail away, no dog owner is going to feel good about that. There's nothing good about that at all. Well, it's an angry looking mass, there's no doubt about that. It's, it's really large compared to the size of the tail, so it really needs to come off. And the only way to be able to take that off effectively, I believe, is to actually just amputate the tip of the tail. It's not very nice. To try and remove that properly, I'm not going to get good margins, which means I'm not going to be able to give the cure that Sheena may want. And it might break down, and Bam Bam is not a good patient. So I think to just take the end of the tail off, it'll be a couple of stitches, end of the problem. And then we can find out what it is. take off any more tail than that. I'll send that away and we'll just see what the soldiers say, but um, fingers crossed. I think it's the right thing that we've done. We've got absolutely everything done. We've cleaned his teeth, we've given him a new hairstyle, and we've sorted out that tail. So I think it's a good result, but I do think that it's a lot for Sheena to take on at once. Good boy. Let's put you back in there while you're still being a good boy. Sheena's a great owner, but I suspect that she's going to be in bits when she comes to pick up Bam Bam, and I just can't reassure her. At the moment, I just simply don't know. It could come back as something absolutely fine. It could come back as really bad news, so we just need to wait and see. It's not the only time we get to pet you. It's quite nice. Hi. Sheena, you all right? <laughs> Let's get your be... boy back. Doing really well. The bits have been very left. Up you go. Out to see mummy. Come on, come on this way. Come on through. B. Oh, he's coughing, is it? Because he wants to get to me. There you go. I knew she'd taken it badly. But then to see the reaction of her to actually collapse on the floor like that, I've never seen anything like it. How are you feeling about everything? It's scary. It's really 
heartbreaking. And I had to take a couple of tranquilizers that then made me really think it was a dream <laughs> after I heard about the tale. So we'll be sending it off to the pathologist. I know you're worried about it, but it's something that we'll have to just hold fire on concern for three days and wait until that result comes back. OK. Taking a little piece of him off is traumatic. He doesn't understand it. Take care, so all right. No worries. Pleasure. Thank you, thank you. See you, buddy. Hi, Sheena, Hi. how are you? Good to see you. Scott, how are you? Very good. Oh, no worries at all. Yeah. Grab a Come seat. On, okay. He's not Come looking on, very boss. keen today, is he? No. no. Oh dear. Yeah, he definitely recognises me. Oh, he kind of knows who you are. Already not so oh, keen, is he? No, no, he's not. <laughs> I'm oh. not going to scalpel on me, I promise. Come on, Bob. I've got some good news for you. Okay. Yeah. And that the results have come back that the mass is benign. So, in other words, nothing nasty, nothing to worry about. I'm so relieved. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. And you know how much I love this dog. <laughs> I'm so happy. Are you happy to hear that? Sheena reacted brilliantly. You know, she's massively relieved and she can go on living with Bam Bam for a very long time and Bam Bam can go on tormenting me. I never thought that I was a very good dog stylist until you <laughs> now have matching haircuts. <laughs> I must have done That's something right. Funny. Well, yeah. Next time I do them, you should come yeah. in. I'll do a two for yeah. one offer. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that would be really, really nice. Great to see you. You too, you too. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Wow. This next job really is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I've just had a call from a good friend of mine, Charlotte, who runs the Isle of Wight Zoo. Her passion is rescue animals, and she's been caring for two incredible Bengal tigers since they're abandoned by their mum as cubs. They're virtually old ladies now, and one of them needs veterinary care, so that's where I'm heading. Hey, Thea. Thea, oh. how are you? Good girl. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're talking. Mm. I find it hard to put into words what she means to me because there's no words to express it. You know, she's she's a very special part of my life. We lived in a caravan together. She slept in my bed and she'd get in my bath and I'd take her for walks out on the beach. But she's an old lady now, and in the wild, 10 to 15 years is what tigers generally get. So at 21, she's very much in the geriatric camp, really. I know. Easier. A lot of it is going to be just routine sort of blood work so that we can just check out their bloods, see how things are functioning because they're old cats. The main procedure is to trim back those claws that they're just not keeping short enough. So they're going to be having a, a manicure. Zia! Hey, Zia! The biggest fear is that Zia won't come through it. <laughs> you know, that's, that is um, fundamentally my biggest concern. I've always had a massive love for tigers, and the conservation of this species is so important to me. I've just arrived on the Isle of Wight, and my goodness, is it white. It is so foggy, it's negative one degree, it's absolutely freezing, but I'm just so excited to see Charlotte. She is a friend, she's someone who I respect massively and I know how much she cares about these tigers. They aren't just tigers that she's looked after. They are tigers that have lived with her, have grown up with her, and she has a massive bond with her. So I know that her heart will break if something goes wrong today, and I'm here to make sure that I can support her no matter what happens. 
Hello. Hello. Welcome oh. back. Thank you so much. What a bizarre day, though. I know. It's like got it's a certain atmosphere, hasn't it? It's foggy and a bit creepy. Mm. And, um, isn't it? It's quite beautiful, though. It's exceptionally beautiful. Mm. Um, probably not as beautiful as uh, the animals that you look after. <laughs> so, um, trimming your cat's nails, hey? Yeah, some little kitty cats for you today. Yeah, 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 yeah just, I'm sure. Just small ones. Just tiny ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not the man eaters. Not those ones. No. No, <laughs> these are just my little girls. I'm just so excited to see these girls again. I can't believe it's been <laughs> 10 years. Time flies. And there they there are. There they are. There's little oh. Zena. Zia and Zena are there in all their majestic glory. These two are absolute stunners. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> Maybe they remember you. <laughs> There you go. That's I, a greeting. I remember my chuffing. That's <laughs> yeah, one thing I do remember. Good. Thank you. You must have been practicing again. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Chuffing's a sort of F sound. <laughs> and it's a, a sort of big vibration that they produce as it goes through their nose and out. And it's a, a, a happiness gesture and it's a lovely when they say it back. <laughs> you rest, old girl. You got a big day ahead, haven't you? Ooh, she's licking that right paw. Mm. Mm. Sort that out for you. So these are the plush bedrooms, eh? I don't know. See, it's been moved up here into another building. The chances are if we kept them in their normal night rooms, Zia might then start to have an awareness of what was going to unfold and that might cause her to be upset. Zia! That's it. OK, let's let her come through. We're going to sort those sore paws out, aren't we, honey? Hmm? You've got to be a good girl. You be nice and calm, hmm? You've got to be a good patient. Yes. She's 21 years old. It's not easy, as you know, um, anaesthetising older animals. Um, things can go wrong. Mm. She's a tough old cookie, so I'm really hoping that she's going to take everything nice and calmly, and she's going to come through the other end. I can't imagine life without Zia. Yeah would be at the end of an era. It's like trying to give an anaesthetic to a grandmother and hoping it's going to be just fine. And a lot of the time, it won't be. There's lots of possible complications here, and it's understandable that Charlotte is incredibly worried. Well, Charlotte, it's a moment of truth, and God, I don't know how you must be feeling. I'm totally in love with her, and I've only met her twice. God knows the depth of emotion you must be feeling, being that she's been by your side for 21 years. You know, my heart is I can tell you're feeling emotional, aren't you? It's beating, yeah, yeah. it's beating. But, so it's yeah. sort of saying goodbye time now, isn't it, really? Yeah, I've got to say goodbye. Fingers crossed. Paws crossed. Paws crossed, yes. I'll dance her, and when she's gone down, I'll go in and assess her. Charlotte's got an amazing team rallying around her. She has John Lewis, who's a wildlife specialist, and he is coming to specifically monitor the anaesthetic. And there's a number of the team from the zoo, other vets, and myself. So there is going to be a lot of people watching these tigers and willing them to get through it. They are very exciting close up. And you can see pictures of tigers, you can watch films of tigers, but it's not until you get your hands on a tiger that they impress you the most. That'll do. Good. It's a bit of a challenging time, you know, mentally and emotionally, but the, the most important thing now is to stay focused on the job and make sure the vets can do their thing. OK, I'm allowed to go in now. This is just an awesome experience to be a vet and this close to a tiger. I think my heart's going like a million miles an hour. We're all acutely aware, of course, that at any second Zia could wake up, so none of us can let our guard down even for a second. Very slow, deep respirations, yep. but you can still see and looking at the abdomen here. And we're checking our oxygen levels over here, so yep. they're all good. Charlotte's very lucky that she has invited three amazing veterinary specialists today. John is a specialist in the anaesthetics of wild cats. And then we've also got Kit, who is a specialist in internal medicine, and he's gonna be looking at Zia's bladder today. And then we've got Matt, who's the regular vet here at the zoo. Just there, I've discovered that that one's digging right yeah. in. No wonder she was looking at that. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be sore for her, so basically click that and all the others to stop the same thing happening. 
you basically just got to be aware all the time of what could go wrong and what are the dangers, because mm. as I say, with domestics, getting bitten and scratched is bad enough, but yeah, with obviously a tiger, it's the next level, really. Let's take out to my finger there. Give that, yep. Yep. So I think the whole cutting of the claws was a little bit more of a breach kind of procedure than maybe Scott was um, reckoning on. I mean, they are really tough, those claws. Oh, man. Oh. And you only get a, a good impression of that when you're up close with them and trying to cut through them. Oh, man, lucky I'd go to the gym, I tell you what. It's full on. And I'm going to place a needle into the bladder and get a sample of urine. She didn't react to that at all, so... Oh, yes, she did. Hello. <laughs> Waking up. Can you leave? Anybody who doesn't need to be in here probably shouldn't be in here. Just in the process of taking a urine sample via a needle into her bladder. But Z is waking up a little bit, so John's concerned, which is why I'm behind the bars now, to be a bit safer. You can come back. She's got a renal, couple of renal cysts, not, nothing yeah. big. Small cysts in, in kidneys, in the, in, the, in the renal cortex, the outside of the kidney in old tigers are not unusual. So, we're all good, we're in the clear. I mean, if you scanned me or, I'm sure not you, Scott. Absolutely you not. But old tigers foot, like you, for sure. Well, you'd find things wrong. Yeah. Bits of this, bits of that, which aren't clinically significant. Mm -hmm. Once we've finished checking out Zia's urinary tract, I'm then able to assess her eyes. I did notice that when she was in her enclosure and then in her bedroom before we knocked her out, she was winking a little bit with her left eye. And then examining that eye, we used just the same dyes that we would at the Richmond practice with my feline patients. Put a little bit of dye in there, it stains onto her cornea and I can see that there's a little tiny corneal ulcer. Yeah, she's got a tiny little mark, can you see that? Just there. It's, so it's really tiny and quite superficial. So with a little bit of flushing out that eye, it should make a full recovery, but what an amazing experience for me, putting dye in a tiger's eye and then getting to examine it. Unbelievable. She's in a safe direction now. She's got to pause that Just, way. Yeah. And if you think about it, if she starts getting up, these bits are facing over there. Now. Yeah. So it makes it a lot safer for you to exit. Exit stays right mm. and quietly, calmly, with dignity. Yeah. Yep. It's been amazing to work with this dedicated team and to see Zia be healthy and to wake up to live another day has been uh, really special, amazing. Mm -hmm. Are you counting sheep? Good girl. I like to just be here to know she's okay rather than be worrying about her at home. She used to sleep with me in my bed, so I'd wake up in the morning and she'd be all snuggled up there and it's not quite that close, you know, but it's nice to even just hear her breathing and, yeah, it's like, you know, 21 years ago, really. No, no, Zia, sleep well and sweet dreams, baby. I'm gonna be dreaming of Scotty, maybe tonight. She is walking so much better now, isn't she? She is, yeah. I mean, she's, I think, feeling really relieved on her little feet. Well, now the nail's shorter and that it's not growing into the pad, she's going to be so much more comfortable. So yeah, yeah, it really was the right thing to do. Would you like to give her a piece of chicken? Bread? Yes, please. Well, here you go. She'll love you forever. Oh, yum. Yum. It doesn't last for long, does it? <laughs> no, it think doesn't. how long it would take us. I'm really glad it's all over. I'm a very happy tiger mum at the moment. It's so funny, up close like this, she just acts like any domestic cat <laughs> would, you know? She's hungry, she loves her mum, she loves her fuss. Just happens to be a really large, very beautiful tiger. I think we've all been really impressed with Scott. You know, I know he's more used to dealing with 
cats on a micro level, you know, but he's supersized his abilities here. Yummy. Yeah, no, he's been an absolute pleasure to have as part of our part of our zoo team. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of it. It's been such a wow, just a once in a lifetime experience. Well you're a great help. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Tiger manicurist. Tick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Charlotte. Okay. Cheers. Oh. I feel incredibly honoured and very lucky that I've been able to share this experience with Charlotte. It's amazing that there are places like this looking after these incredible animals. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.